Hey guys, in this video, we're going to add the health UI and link it to the take damage system. This will allow us to see both our player and enemy take damage. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. To begin, you can download the health slider asset from the description below. Although this is optional, it will give you a visual representation of the health. Once downloaded, open the zip file and locate the PSD files for the border and the health bar. Drag these files into your Unity UI folder. Now select both the health images and set the compression to none and the filter mode to point no filter. Go to the top and set the texture type to sprite, then click apply. Next, right click on our player and create a new canvas. Rename it to 3D Health Canvas and set the render mode to world space. Adjust the transform values as follows. POS X is equal to zero, POS Y to two, and POS Z to zero. We'll set the width and height to 250, and for the scale, we'll use 0.02 0.03 and 0.02 again. Right click on the canvas game object in the hierarchy and add a slider game object. In the fill area, select fill from the drop down menu and drag the health bar image into the source image slot. You can delete the handle slide area since we won't be using it. To determine the direction of the slider, adjust the values based on your preference. In my case, I set it to go from right to left to represent the health decrease. In the hierarchy, locate the background and adjust the health UI sprite according to your style. You can modify the size of the background border and scale the fill area, which is our own health bar, to your liking. I also added the color green to the health bar. Once you're satisfied with the settings, rename the slider to health bar and the fill area to green health, just to make it easier to reference later in the script. To add the health UI to the enemy, duplicate the 3D canvas and attach it to the enemy game object. Set the X and Z positions to zero and change the color of the health bar from green to red. Now let's focus on the player. We need to add the HP bar to our 2D canvas. Instead of duplicating the 3D canvas, duplicate the health bar game object and attach it to the 2D canvas game object. Delete the background so that only the health bar is visible. Increase the scale of the health bar to make it noticeable in the game scene. Position at the bottom of the HUD where the health slot is located and adjust the slider scale to suit your game. In my case, I set the direction to go from left to right. Now that we have our health canvases set up, you may notice that the 3D canvas rotates with the player during gameplay. To ensure that the canvas always faces the camera regardless of the player's rotation, we'll implement a technique called billboarding. Go to the 3D health canvas game object and add a script called billboard canvas. Open it in Visual Studio and within the script, define a transform variable called camera transform. In the start method, assign the camera transform to camera.main.transform. In the update method, which should be running on late update, add the following line of code transform.lookat, transform.position plus camera transform.rotation. We'll then times that by negative vector3.forward, add the camera transform.rotation times vector3.up to complete the line. Save the script and return to Unity. When you press play, you'll notice that the 3D canvas on our player always faces the camera, while the 3D canvas on the enemy still remains fixed. If the Y axis appears too large, you can always adjust the scale of the canvas to make it smaller. Now I have my scale to 0.02 across all the axes. Now let's move on to making the health script work. Go to the player and add a new script called health UI. In this script, we'll be using unityengine.ui and these are the following variables we'll need a public slider called health slider 3D, and another public slider which is called health slider 2D. We can remove the start and update functions and we'll create two new methods, start 3D slider and update 3D slider. In the start 3D slider method, define a float variable called max value, and inside of this method, assign the value of max value to both health slider 3D.max value and health slider 3D.value. Next, create update 3D slider method, which takes a float parameter called value. In this method, Set the health slider 3D.value to the input value. Now, let's create another method specifically for the 2D canvas, which in this case will only be used for our player. To find a public void called update 2D slider, which takes two floats, max value and value. Inside this method, add an if statement to check if the game object has a tag named player. Set the health slider 2D.max value to max value. After that, have health slider 2D.value to value. That's all we need for this script. 
Now let's make some changes to the stat script we created in the previous videos. Open the stat script in Visual Studio. Let's add a header called base stats and a comment section called health slider variables. Inside this section, add the following variables. A public float called damage lerp duration, a private float called current health, another private float called target health, a private coroutine called damage coroutine, and lastly, a health UI reference called health UI. Next, create a private void called awake. In this method, assign health UI to get component health UI. We'll set the current health and target health equal to the health and make sure that the UI sliders are set to the health for the 3D slider. For the 2D slider, we'll store the variables health and current health. Afterwards, you don't have to follow this part, but I'm going to do a quick input on get key down to test the damage for our player since there's no other way of damaging the player yet. Now let's modify the take damage function and instead of deleting it, we'll rewrite the code to replace its functionality. First, we'll get a reference to the target stats component by creating a variable called target stats and assigning it to target component stats. Subtract the damage amount from the target stats target health. This will allow us to reduce the health of the target based on the damage of our stats. Check if target health is less than or equal to zero. And if this condition is met, destroy the target game object. We'll then write a separate void which will check if the player is dead. Else, if the target stats damage coroutine is equal to null, we'll call a separate void called start lerp health. Outside of this method, create a void called check if player is dead, and inside this method, call health ui.update 2 d slider with health and zero as the input values. Now let's create the start lerp health void. Check if the damage coroutine is null, and before proceeding, in this void, Start the damage coroutine and create an I enumerator lerp health. In here, we'll create three new floats, an elapsed time equals zero, an initial health which is equal to the current health, and a float target set to the target health. After, write a while loop where the elapsed time is less than the damage lerp duration, have the current health equal to the math lerp, initial health, target, elapsed time divided by the damage lerp duration. We'll then write an update health UI function here and set the elapsed time to time.delta time and setting yield return to null. Outside of the while loop, have the current health equal to the target and call the update health UI. And to finish off, setting the damage coroutine to null. To complete the script, update the canvas values once again in the update health UI method as needed. Getting the update 2D and 3D slider, storing the health and current health variables where necessary. In Unity, drag the sliders to their respective slots in the inspector. I recommend renaming the sliders to 2D and 3D for clarity. Also, add the health UI script to the enemy and assign its 3D slider in the inspector. Before testing, set the damage lerp duration for the player to 0.5 and for the enemy it's 0.1. This way, you can observe the speed difference when both player and enemy are taking damage. To conclude this video, let's click play. When I press the V key, which triggers the damage player function, you can see that the 3D and 2D health sliders on the player are in sync and taking damage. The health will slowly lerp into its new value over a 0.5 second delay. When I attack the enemy, since the damage lerp duration is set to 0.1, the change is much quicker. Now we can observe the health bars on both game objects while they take damage, providing a foundation for implementing damaging and healing abilities. That is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next coming episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.